welcome to all of our viewers. I'm Hira Heather from the Pakistan Youth Forum and today I have a brilliant personality with me. She's quite little for her age, however, she just proved to me within the few minutes while I was interacting with her that age does not define maturity and it definitely does not define intelligence either. I'm sitting with Sitara Baruch Akbar who has achieved many, many things. However, other than that, we have decided PYF that we must take somebody like Sitara as our ambassador and she needs to be the voice of PYF to introduce what our organization is, what our motive is and other than that she is an inspiration for all of the students out there, for all of the youth out there who are struggling with their educational lives, especially our Pakistani youth within the UAE. So Sitara, now tell me what exactly motivated you to join PYF and what exactly will be your role in our team? Well, I believe that a life that isn't lived serving humanity isn't one that is worth living and every drop joins together to make a river. And we should try our best to help others when they are mm -hmm. struggling in life because that's what God rewards us for. So I want to help other people who are living here. I want to serve humanity. I want to make my share and do something good. You know, it's just God rewards you for the good things that you do for others. So I want to help the students here, I want to help serve humanity, I want to do everything that I can. And I am be serving as the youth ambassador and I'll be voice I'll be the voice for PYF. Other than that, I'm also planning on helping in developing workshops for education. I'm going to help in reading comprehension, anything that I can. Like every child is gifted. Some of us just open our packages earlier than others. So I want to help the other children discover their packages and open them so that they don't have to wait to realize that they're really special. So Tara, you just said that some children open their packages way before their time. You've done the exact same thing. So tell me, when was the first time where you realized that you were, mashallah, gifted? Uh, well, every child is intelligent. I don't think that I'm that different from other people. But I just realized that I hated cramming stuff like mm -hmm. other people might as well. I just wanted to learn the concept behind the things. And when my teacher told me that this is a seed and a tree grows out of it, I'd ask her, like, why does a tree grow out of it? How does it, it's so huge and this is so little. Mm -hmm. How does it grow? and what does it need to grow and then they'd get really annoyed. So I think the questioning that I did was the first time that I, I realized that, okay, mm. there's something more to life than just books. And I just learned the theory and then I wanted to see it for myself. I wanted to see it happen that, oh yes, it's true, what they taught us is true and mm -hmm. it's really different and it's something that's useful for me. It's a useful piece of information. Mm -hmm. So I think that realizing that was really important. Every child should know that, that there's mm -hmm. more to education than just books. And if your education doesn't develop your character, then it isn't an education that is useful for you in your life. Mm -hmm. So what was your parents' first reaction when the teacher must have told your parents that she's been questioning me and she's asking all of these different kinds of questions? How did your parents respond to that? Did they encourage your different uh, school of thought or did they question you directly? What was their reaction? Well, my parents already knew that I was an annoying child. <laughs> and when the uh, teacher told my parents that I'm disturbing the class uh -huh. and I ask way too many questions and I don't quiet down, then my parents decided that Okay, she's at the bottom of the class, let's start something different. And then they made their own school for me, they opened it, they registered it. And then they wanted me to go through education there because they thought maybe it's because of the school, maybe it's because of the teachers. But it wasn't because of that as well and I just went there for three months and then I had to drop out of there as well. Because I couldn't even get along. Because mm -hmm. we, were the, we were learning at a slow pace. For example, mm -hmm. in nursery they taught us that this is A mm -hmm. and then you write it down for about 20 times. And I'd say, I've learned how to write A, I don't want to do it again. <laughs> Uh, teach me something new. Mm -hmm. Like you start learning because we don't know how to talk when we're born. Yeah. We're taught that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that age, up till the age of 10, 11, it's really important. Then everything that you learn stays with you for your life. So I think my parents realized mm -hmm. that, okay, let's teach her something new. And then my mom helped me prepare for my IGCSEs and that was the first time at age 9 when I gave it. You jumped a very big bridge. Uh, but one question which I really wanted to ask you, and I'm sure everybody else out there would want to know as well, that as a student, what were the techniques that you adopted? Because every individual has different techniques of studying. For example, some people do the uh, complete memorization, word for word. Some people just, you know, have bullet points and they memorize that. So what was your technique? Oh, there's another thing which we were talking offset right now about photographic memory. So just tell me, what was your learning technique? I don't think I've ever had problem, Alhamdulillah, God blessed me with a lot of stuff and I don't think as many other people might know mm -hmm. that their memory doesn't bother them because at that age you can memorize everything that you hear like even if it's something really minor then you can remember it, you just look mm -hmm. for it back in your head and then it's right there. 
So I, my mom used to make these cardboard cutouts of the things mm -hmm. I wanted to learn and I used to paste them on the wall. For somewhere I used to go, for example, if I'm watching TV, then she'd paste it on the TV trolley. So that whenever the TV was a break, a commercial break, I'd just look up there and I was like, okay, that's the formula that mm -hmm. I need to learn. Other than that, my mom used to knead dough mm -hmm. and she bought me beads. So whenever she was kneading dough, she'd put me some on a plate and then I used to arrange the bead. This is carbon dioxide and she mm -hmm. told me the pink bead was carbon and mm -hmm. the green ones, for example, were oxygen. So I'd put one pink bead there and then two green ones and I'm like, mom, look, I made carbon dioxide. So that mm. was, I think it was important for me to learn that how the things work and do it practically instead of just books because that helps me re remember stuff mm -hmm. a lot. Okay, but this is a very interesting fact because usually the concept that people have at the back of their heads is that if a child is very gifted or if they're very intelligent, they've got their heads in the books. But I mean, the way which you just told me how your mom used to teach you concepts, it's a very creative way. So that's moving away from traditional learning. Uh, is there any specific uh, thing which you would like to give to you know, a message to anybody out there right now, to any parent watching that it's not important to just have your head in books. Just give them a little shout out. Well, I think that if your child is having trouble, like if there's something that they aren't learning, so mm -hmm. instead of telling them that you have to go for in like I've seen that most parents have decided for their children what they want to do. They don't let their children decide. They tell them, oh, well, if it's a girl, she's going to be a doctor. If it's a boy, he's going to be an engineer. Let them decide their dreams. And my parents told me that there's just one thing we want you to do, and that is dream, dream, and dream big. And if your dreams aren't scaring you at that time and you don't think that you're achieving them, then they aren't big enough. And I failed to get an admission soon enough because of my age. And my mom told me that if you don't fail 90% of the time, then you aren't aiming big enough. So we're happy with what you're doing right now. So I want the parents to think that if their child isn't succeeding in what they think, and let him choose for himself. Let him decide what he wants to do in life and then support him throughout because parent support is really, really important in anyone's life. Okay, so there are one more question uh, which was really, really bothering me at the back of my head was that she's just a 15-year-old. How does she interact with kids her own age? Because we all know that 15-year-olds, they're still children. So your friends or your siblings, how do you interact with them? Do you feel sometimes lonely that you're not able to make them understand what you're saying or they don't understand what you're saying? How does the communication work? It works like any other communication does. It's not always about books. I'm not just going to go out there and blur facts about science. Uh -huh. I'm going to talk about normal things and I've never had trouble like that communicating mm -hmm. with them. And other than that, most of my friends or most of the people I interact with are older than my age beside my siblings. Mm -hmm. So it's all okay. It's all normal. I've always been like, uh, my mom told me that you're a 30 year old <laughs> at the, since the age of nine. So I don't think I've had trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay, every student or every child, we always get frustrated while we're studying. Now, what is one tactic that you use to clear your mind or freshen up your you know, head when you're really frustrated, when you're sick of the concepts that um, it's, I can't memorize this, it's just too much. So how do you soothe yourself? Don't do something that you don't want to do. Take a break and mm -hmm. then just like, if, I am, if one day I'm feeling like really bothered, and I'm like, okay, I've done, I've worked this much, and then I can take a break. I take a break, I clear my head, I do something that I really like instead and then I'd go back to it and then mm. I'd be, I had a fresh mind and then it was easy for me to go through it again. Okay, so we know the studio Sitara and how you just said that you, uh, after your books you go and you do something which you like. So what does Sitara like doing? What does she do for fun? Uh, well, I like badminton, I like mm -hmm. watching football and then I like playing with my like, younger siblings. They like play hide and seek with us, play tag. So it's just, I like a normal kid. I mm. cook, so I learn something new. For example, if my mom's in the kitchen, I want to learn something new and I just go with her. Other than mm. that, I like reading novels. Mm. I do a lot of stuff. I like public I like public speaking. So if I have something to do with that, I do that as well. I like debates. Uh -huh. I, like, I like a lot of stuff. There's mm -hmm. a long list that could go on forever. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you tell me, Sitara, what is the importance of public speaking in your opinion? Because you've been speaking, mashallah say, to like vast, vast amounts of people to the media and to different kinds of people. And why do you think that that is one quality which every youngster should really work towards? I think that leaders aren't born, leaders are created. And a real leader isn't one who just needs more followers or create more followers. A real leader is one who creates more leaders. And you never know when one word of motivation that you've uttered or something you like, this is an encouraging part, like you've done so well, good, good work, that's amazing what you've done. 
and I think that can maybe you don't know it might have changed mm-hmm. someone's life and they're like oh yeah there was something little that I did and I can do better stuff I can do bigger stuff and mm-hmm. someone will be proud of me so I want to encourage other people I want them to know that they mm-hmm. can do something as well and they can dream big and it's okay not to achieve them in the first try if you like aim big and fall short you still achieve more than aiming little okay mashallah you've said such amazing things but one personal question I hope you don't mind it that what is your relationship with Allah? Allah has blessed you with so many things, with a beautiful family who support you so much, with such a great mind, with so much of respect at just the age of 15. What is your relationship with Allah? I think dua is the first thing I've ever done in my life and I will mm-hmm. continue to do it before exams I do dua. Before I like, parents taught me that if a tree is like really, mm-hmm. it never breaks and it has fruit on it. For example, they, taught, they made me see an apple tree and it was bent and it had fruit on it. Mm-hmm. And there was this thing we called a safed and it was really tall and it was standing proud. So my parents told me that never be proud because Allah rewards those who are humble and Allah doesn't like people who have pride in their hearts. So they told me confidence and pride is something really different. Mm -hmm. Be confident of who you are because Allah made you that way but Mm -hmm. don't be proud because you have nothing. Everything here belongs to Allah. So I think prayer is really important and the only person you should rely on or look for something is Allah. Because if you're like, oh that person will give me a scholarship, that person will give me respect if I go talk to him, then Allah thinks, oh go and get it whatever Mm -hmm. he gives you and if you rely on Allah, Allah will reward you so much Mm -hmm. if he fulfills all your dreams and everyone's dreams in the world everything that Mm -hmm. we want there will still be so much of his blessings left that he could shower us again and again and again so I only look towards Allah whenever I ask for anything excellent response and completely expected from somebody like you but uh, Sitara, there are many students out there, not only who are 15, your case is very different, you're not uh, able to get an admission because of your age, of course there's a certain age limit for universities, but there are also other students out there who financially are not able or who have uh, problems such as they haven't been facilitated with really good schools or a really good background and they can't apply for excellent universities. What would you like to say to such students who are going through such a struggle, which is quite frustrating and after a point when the whole world is saying no to you how are these students supposed to react what are they supposed to do well i was taught that don't lose hope and hope Mm -hmm. is a little voice that at the end of the day when you've lost everything you think you've lost everything actually Mm -hmm. hope it will tell you no you can try again tomorrow i think try again try try again we were taught that if you fall down eight times stand up nine times otherwise you are not being human so I think every human fails in life and there's a difficult time, don't mm-hmm. give up. And then like if the door of opportunity doesn't open itself to you, break it down. Otherwise if the door doesn't break down, it's made of steel, mm-hmm. break the window, do something, get in there. No one's going to come and give it to you on a platter if you want mm-hmm. success. It's a seven letter word that has a lot of meaning for other people out there as well. Maybe success for me is achieving the Nobel Prize or doing something to serve humanity. Mm-hmm. Some other person, they might be just getting a plate of uh, like food on their table. Success mm-hmm. is really different, so aim high, aim big, achieve more, because mm-hmm. it just aim high and then shoot towards that goal. Always shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. Excellent. One more thing, uh, which is a very big problem nowadays, it's the communication between parents and children. Because of this, many problems emerge. If there is a problem in a child's life, they're not able to communicate with the parents. There's a really big bridge between them, the generation gap, the difference in cultures now. How do you think children can overcome communication problems with their parents? I think parents are your teachers, parents guide you, they've already been through life so you can take, instead of doing your mistakes and learning from them, why don't you learn from others' mistakes, observe Mm -hmm. them. Your parents will never, they gave birth to you, they've raised you this far, Mm -hmm. they'll never misguide you, they'll always think the best of you and even if you think that my parents don't know about this, they'll always want the best for you and your parents are your best friends besides Alamia. If you you know you have to rely on Alamia and Alamia give you those parents you rely on them as well. So think instead of thinking oh I'll seek advice from a friend, mm-hmm. asking friend for advice is okay, but they're still your age, they're still thinking the way that you do, mm-hmm. and maybe the people you relate with have your level of maturity. So why don't you ask your parents instead because they have the best at heart for you. Mm-hmm. Do you think sometimes that you are under a lot of pressure of expectations from your family, your immediate family, then your family, which is back in Pakistan, they must have many expectations from you. Do you get nervous at times? They do expect from me, Mm -hmm. they just expect for me to be a good child. They expect for me to be respectable. 
for other elders. The only thing that they respect to me is for be, to be an ethical part of the society, mm -hmm. to be a good citizen of my country, whatever I'm living to obey the laws and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that is something that you should expect from everyone. And if I achieve something, I wouldn't call these things achievements, but if I do something that's like different from what, uh, what other people have done, they're like, okay, we're proud of you. Okay, one uh, basic element in our Pakistani society, it's quite unfortunate, uh, mostly it happens in the lower class or in the lower middle class, is the fact that parents do not encourage their daughters to get very educated. However, this is more of a cultural thing, it's not a religious factor at all. So why do you think it is very important for girls to get educated or to actually achieve really high degrees, to achieve a PhD? In your opinion, in Sitar's opinion, why do you think that will help you in the future? And why do we need girls who are very well educated? I think women are the greatest untapped natural resource that we have left. And if you teach a man, you're teaching one person. Mm -hmm. And if you teach a woman, you're teaching your, your generation. Because she's going to teach her children, she's going to teach her other, because she comes in more contact with people than pe other people do. Mm -hmm. I think if you don't, if you deprive them of education, then we're uh, depriving us of uh, prosperity, because the way to mm -hmm. prosperity comes through education. So you just can't educate half of your population and leave the other half to mend for themselves. And this question, I will also ask you that those who are girls who don't give education to their parents, they say that there is no need to learn more, they don't have to learn more, they don't have to learn more, or they don't have to learn more, they don't have to learn more, they don't have to learn more. So please tell me again, why is it so important that girls get good education to their parents? میرے خیال سے یہ صرف کلچرل ڈیفرنس رہ گیا اسلام نے تو کہا ہے کہ مرد اور عورت کے لئے دونوں کے لئے ایڈوکیشن لینا ضروری ہے بہت زیادہ تو اگر آپ صرف اپنی ہاف پاپیلیشن کو ایڈوکیٹ کرو گے ہاف کو نہیں کرو گے تو آپ اپنے ساتھ بھی ظلم کر رہے ہیں اور اپنے کنٹری کے ساتھ بھی کر رہے ہیں کیونکہ وہ پروسپر نہیں کر سکتا اور آج کل تو دھوڑی ایڈوکیشن کیا تو اگر آپ ایک بندے کو ڈپریف کر دو گے صرف ہاؤس ہول ورڈ دکھاؤ گے یہ نہیں کہ ان کو ہر چیز آنی چاہیے یہ آپ نے یہ شوڈ بی سیف کیپ اب یہ شوڈن نیٹ لوگ کسی اور کی طرف نہیں آپ کو دیکھنا چاہیے کہ یہ مجھے یہ کر دے یہ مجھے کھانا پکا دے یہ میری سفائی کر دے آپ کو ہر چیز خود آنی چاہیے لیکن آپ ان کو ایک چیز سکھا کے دوسری چیز سے ڈپریف مت کریں Okay, Sitara, what message would you like to give all of our viewers out there who are watching you and who now know that you are PYF's newest, youngest ambassador? Well, I'd like them to know that we live our life in change, but we never realize that we have the key to them ourselves. And I want you to know that disappointment isn't everything. If you fail, failure is just a stepping stone towards success. Don't give up, work hard, and you will achieve your dream, inshallah. I would like to personally thank Sitar who really does shine as bright as her name just like a star and it's an honor to have her on our PYF team as the ambassador. Thank you very much Sitara for your time and other than that I would like to say to all of our viewers that please do like our Facebook page and if you need to contact us please do message us feel free if you think that you can contribute to our cause if you think that you need help from our cause we are platform here just for you. Thank you.